Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another Title Tuesday. I got Eric Downing with me here again from Hawker Title here in Indianapolis. And this month, we're just kind of focusing on best ways to communicate with a title company. Um, and today, what we want to talk about is what's the most appropriate way to follow up with closing. So we all, we all know as wholesalers or investors in general, buyers, sellers, whoever it is, you always want to push You're like, hey, can this get done tomorrow? Can this get, you know, why isn't this done yet? And there's, there, those questions are out there but what's the most appropriate way to kind of do that? And I always just come back to just like, how would I want them to communicate with me? So me, I love email. It works the best for me. I'm going to send over an email to who's ever, you know, I know is working on those files and things like that. And really I'm just going to be as nice as possible. So I'm going to want a nice response back. I just feel like it goes a long way. So versus, Hey, what's going on with this file? file? Why didn't it close yet? It's going to be like, Hey, I'm just checking on this. I want to just want to see what's going on. Is there anything I can do to help? So that's how I go about it. So Eric, I'm sure from you guys and your, your staff and what you guys do, you guys are cranking out tons of files, tons of, uh, tons of closings, everything like that. So I'm sure you guys get a wide variety of people that are reaching out to you to check on those closings. So when it comes to a wholesaler and checking up on what's going on, what do you kind of advise and like kind of what's the most appropriate way for them to go about that um, to where maybe they need to put a little pressure on, but not be too, you know, too pushy or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think up front, um, it's setting the expectation. So if your purchase agreement has an expiration date in it, to be honest with you, most title companies are going to work towards that expiration date. Um, I don't know how to describe that other than that historically an expiration date was viewed and still is as the closing date. Um, certainly, if you want to close it sooner and you've just given yourself, let's say, that due diligence period, um, especially wholesalers because maybe they don't have a buyer lined up yet, um, we'll we'll see this a lot with wholesalers where they'll they'll give themselves a 60 day um, you know due diligence period, but they line up a buyer in 20 days or less, and then they're like, well, why didn't we close yet? Well, your expiration date was 60 days. So I think communication is key from the beginning. When you send over that purchase agreement and you you want to acknowledge like, hey, I realize I pushed out this date, but assuming I can get my ducks in a row, I'd like to close this a lot sooner. Uh, is it best that a title company works off expiration? No, but when you're taking orders from a variety of different, um, you know, customer bases, realtors, the government, lenders, wholesalers, just other investors, they all have a different kind of scope of what they expect in a timeline. So we traditionally use the expiration date as our end all be all. We want to be closed no later than that. So set the expectation right. Email certainly is best. Uh, it's a lot harder to get somebody on the phone and be able to answer to your questions right away because there's a little digging that has to happen. It's not like calling to find out if your Amazon order has shipped yet because they have barcodes all over the country and they can scan and see in systems, yes or no. This is truly, you're gonna be asking a very open-ended question about why isn't it closing. So sending an email, understanding that the response may take a little while because again, there's some digging we have to do. Uh, typically, the person responding may not be the person that's actually working that file. Now, at our office, it is. Typically, we get that routed over to the person, that, that question routed to the person who's actually working on it. But I know even just a lot of title companies locally, like they have their customer service set up, and they want to they give you the best response, but they got to dig for it a little bit and figure out why it's waiting. And you hit the best part, which was you're going to get what you give. And we talked about this a little bit before the recording, but I, I would be very upset if anybody on my team ever responded in a hateful, um, inappropriate manner. But we get a lot of that hate and inappropriate um, questions from customers. And they, you know, you want to treat people the way you want to be treated. And just remember, it may be taking title company a long time to get something done, but it doesn't mean they're not working on it. Right. Uh, there are some very intricate interwoven uh, things and, and pieces that go into to conveying clear title and making sure that both the buyer seller, the underwriter with the insurance and us are all protected and keep that in mind. That's what the title company's job is to protect everybody. Um, yep. And so we, we want to rush as quickly as possible because we know nobody gets paid, including the title company until closing day. But it's, it's very important that we, we don't rush things. So I think email is probably the most appropriate and, and figure out who that contact is, figure out who you have it in with. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, I think it's huge. I, I really like what you said of basically like kind of informing things. If there's a, you have a 60 day closing on there, or 60 day, you know, 
time period where you can't close it, but you get somebody in 20 days, just communicating that over and just letting them know. Like when I send that file over originally, I'm going to say, Hey, we have 60, you know, there's a 60 day closing period on this, but I am going to try to line up a buyer. So there might be someone before that. I'm going to include that in the email. I'm going to inform them of that. And then also I'm going to do little things like when I do get that buyer and I'm going to send it over, I'm say like, Hey, we have a buyer for this. We would like to close in the next, you know, within the next 10 days. Is that possible? Do you think that's able to be done? Those types of things. So just letting them know that. And then I, something I always like to do too, whether it's, you know, this relationship or any of the relationships, I always like to ask permission for what I'm able to do. So for example, in this case, if I know, you know, I've said we've done communication, I've worked with Eric multiple times. So I know usually like, hey, if I send a file over to get it closed, you know, to sell it to somebody, I can usually get it closed within seven days. That's what I expect from them. That's what we can usually do. Sometimes it's quicker. Sometimes there might be in it, you know, that, that stuff happens. But I'm going to say, hey, is it, can I ask permission for if it takes longer than seven days that I reach out and it's okay that I kind of question what's going on just so I'm informed. You know, those types of things go a really long way. It's just like as a wholesaler, we're going to do that with our sellers. We're going to ask permission to, you know, question what they, what they value their property at. We're going to do that kind of stuff. So we want to do the same thing with title company. We want to make sure that we are putting our best foot forward. And like Eric said too, you get, you get what you give. So you put out that, that kindness and, and just the, I guess the appreciation for it too. I think that goes a long way. So, and I always know too, from working with, you know, Eric and, and Hawker and then other multiple, you know, title companies um, throughout Indianapolis and stuff too. If, when, if I need a favor done, I, I did this with Eric a couple, you know, a month ago, like, Eric, I need this one to close. Like this is the last day we need to get this one in. It's going to get us to our, you know, we need to get to our goal. And you know what, if I was kind of a butthead before to him, he might even like, I'm sorry, I can't get it done. I might, you know, I, I you never know. So <laughs> sure, Eric doesn't play favorites, but I feel like it helped me out maybe on on you know getting in we have a relationship we've done this he knows that like hey i'm not going to push him unless like i kind of want something done and things so i think that stuff goes a long way so eric any last thing to add to this one absolutely i appreciate that um and and while we don't play favorites it, it, it certainly does play into the response and how high up we might be you know electing to get somebody an answer if i'm not being treated you know what i feel like is professionally um and i have a bunch of people asking similar questions that i feel like are treating me professionally it probably means i'm going to get to them first and but that's neither here nor there what i was going to go back to on with the you know closing time keep in mind and this is across the board with title companies every underwriter has a different requirement for how old that search can be before we close but the question some people will say is, well, I sent that order to you, um, you know, three weeks ago, and, and it has a 60-day uh, a 60 day expiration date. Why isn't it ready to close yet? Well, again, if you're not communicating your, your request to close sooner than that 60 days, we have to order and spend a lot of money to do title updates, tax updates, updates for utilities, updates for HOAs. So the time and money spent to actually retrieve updated information to satisfy our requirements with the underwriter so we can issue the policy, we're, we're inclined not to do that over and over and over again when we know that it has an expiration date. So if you just communicate, it's not like we just are being lazy and we're like, we don't want to do that. There's truly a cost involved with every time we order this or do that and get an update from something. And so it's oftentimes that we're just trying to protect our own expense in the transaction, just like you know, any business owner, including wholesalers and investors, are trying to protect their own expenses. We're trying to make sure that we're doing it at the appropriate time so we don't have to do it three, four, or five times and then incur all those expenses. So, yeah, yeah. And we all know that within even like there's a that's 60 days is a pretty long range. So, if something can happen from day one to day 60, there can always be something from the city or the county that pops up on there as well. And, you know, little things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, just it's it's communication. So, being, you know, communicating with the title company and keeping them informed um, and then also your sellers and buyers, keeping them in the loop as well. So they know what's going on as well. So it's not just you communicating, but it's, you know, the sellers included in that or the buyers included in that, anybody that needs to be on there. So the title company doesn't have like three people coming at them asking the exact same question. Um, and that's really what you are. You are the conduit to this, to the whole thing as a wholesaler. So um, thanks a lot, Eric. Great insights on this one. And uh, we will see everybody next week on another title Tuesday. Take care guys.